Sorry, guys. Like, I think it's the nerves regrowing. I heard that nerves, um, they start regrowing wherever they were sliced up. Ow. Apologize about that. I don't mean to grab my boob on camera. But anyway, my anesthesiologist, he was an older gentleman. He ended up being really nice. So this, this is the trippiest thing ever. I don't know if you guys have ever been under, but walking to your own operation table is just so weird. Like walking by the tools and like the surgery. I, Dr. Salmi was not in the room yet and I never saw him in the operation room. He was probably like, like washing up and prepping. But like the surgery technicians are putting their gloves on prepping tools, I'm hearing like a metal clanking, but I get into the bed, like the bed is so warm, they attach my, they attach my calves to, um, to like calf massagers, which was really cool, like I felt like I was in a freaking spa, and I, I'm very lucky that Dr. Salmi has his own private surgery room, which is extremely rare, it is not it is not part of a hospital. He actually built it himself because he wanted his patients to have the privacy of not having to share a surgical room with anyone else but his own like patients, which is awesome. I'm telling you guys, if you're in the Seattle area, you have to go to Dr. Salmi. So anyway, come into the room. I have my left arm stretched out this way, my right arm stretched out this way. And I'm just, like, staring at those, like, big, like, surgical lights. And my heart is racing because I've never been under before and I don't know what to expect. And all I feel is, like, the anesthesiologist with the coldest hands in the world just grabs my hand. And as you guys, I don't know if you can see, but you can see this is where the IV was put in. He puts in, like, the IV and he's like, sorry, my hands are cold. We always wash our hands. And, you know, I'm making a joke. I'm like, that's a great problem to have. I don't care. Keep washing your hands. It means you're clean. I have the n surgical technician or nurse. Very, very, very nice lady. She's, like, doing things to my right arm, putting stickers on me. I'm pretty sure they were electrodes to monitor my heart rate. I, don't, I have no idea what it was. I know that they clipped something on my finger, which I'm pretty sure was, was for my heart rate. Um... The anesthesiologist started putting numbing agent through my, through my body as I'm laying there. I'm kind of feeling more relaxed, but I'm not feeling numb, you know, so I'm kind of worried. I'm always, like, worried that I'll be one of those cases of people that, like, anesthesia doesn't affect me and I'm, a, I'm awake through the whole surgery. Have you ever thought about that? That's very scary. So, I'm, like, laying there, and they're, like, talking to me. They're like, asking me where I'm from, what, and they're, like... I, like I mentioned that I'm like Russian they're like wow you speak Russian like that's amazing where do you live and you know obviously they're trying to distract me because like who the hell acts normal on their own operation table like think about it so I'm like talking to them and then uh, the anesthesiologist is like he's like okay I'm gonna and and usually like he told me he's gonna tell me when he puts in the general anesthesia like they usually like tell you like all right you're about to go to sleep just so you know like let's count one two three or whatever like he told me he's gonna do that but instead he was just like he he was just like okay i'm gonna put in a sedative and it's gonna feel like you're drinking a martini ready and i'm like okay yum you know i'm just like oh yummy martinis so he put, so all of a sudden I feel like the stinging sensation and I just feel it traveling up and all of a sudden I'm laughing hysterically. Like I'm laying on the operation table, just dying. Like I'm staring at the light and just like cracking, like at least I thought I was cracking jokes. I was laughing and laughing and laughing, having a blast. And next thing I know, I wake up. I don't know when I went under, but I wake up and I just feel this horrible chest, not chest pain, but just pressure. Like, I feel like there's an elephant sitting on my chest. And it's funny because I read that being under general anesthesia is kind of like being on under, under a reversible coma. So I know that you can't make dreams and you can't really think. Hold on just a second. Edig? 
Babe, I'm filming. Now I have to edit this part out. <sighs> Baby. Uh. Don't come in the room, I'm filming. Why are you home so early? I was filming. What's wrong I was in that? such a good flow, but now I have to go back and edit it. Okay, you can keep going. I'll go to the kitchen. I got you on the milk. Why are you off so early? Because nobody showed up to the 6 o'clock show. Why? What's wrong? Because we need money for LA. I know. I, I open tomorrow. YouTube. Um, that's what I was going to do. Okay, babe, I'm filming. Now I don't know where I was. Sorry. It's okay. Just... I get distracted. This is why I can't. This is why I want to live on our own because my parents come home when I'm doing shit like this. It's annoying. Let me know when you're done. Okay. Don't listen to me. So I'm laughing hysterically and just like, oh, oh yeah. So I wake up and I just feel like there's an elephant like sitting on my chest. And, <coughs> excuse me. And I heard before that, um, not heard, but I, of course I did my research. I learned that like being under general anesthesia is kind of like being in a reversible coma, which sounds really freaky. And like you're, you're, you, you can't make any memories. You can't feel anything. You're completely paralyzed. But, um, as you wake up from it, like, I guess your brain starts working normally and I had this dream that like someone was just like, grabbing onto my chest and just squeezing me really really hard like over and over again and I like opened my eyes and the nurse is just like looking at me like this she's like hi good morning I felt like I slept for a week like it went by really fast it's like my eyes closed my eyes open but like in my head it felt like I was out for a good week and it was like the best nap of my life like ever she's like do you want me to get your boyfriend for you i'm like okay sure and i was just so out of it um so yeah that was my first time going under it's not that bad of experience if you are afraid of that part don't be afraid at all just cho just choose a board or what is a board certified plastic surgeon make sure you're in good hands do not cheap out on your surgery. Honestly, it is not worth it to save a couple thousand bucks to risk your life. Pay more so you're in good hands. How do I, um, what was my original size and what is it now? I think I talked about it. I was a 34 double A, which means less than an A cup. Um, hopefully I'm a 34 C, 34 D right now. Um, this isn't my final size again. They haven't dropped, so they're, they're smaller now than they will be. How do I feel? I feel really high all the time. Emotional. I'm either laughing, <coughs> crying, and I'm extremely, for those of you who have sent me messages, text messages, flowers, gifts, I freaking love you. You guys just made this experience so much better for me because, you know, I only have one person taking care of me. My whole entire family is in Costa Rica, which great for them. I would, honestly would much rather have the surgery than go on vacation because that's how bad I wanted it. So only Ed's around. And, you know, and I'm sure I've pissed off Ed many times because I was really, like, I'm a, I'm a hard patient. I think he really hated me as a patient. So to all the amazing messages that you guys sent me, thank you, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, how has recovery been like? Again, I'm really high. My chest sometimes is just spasms. Like, it feels like someone just, like, grabs onto my muscles, let's go. Grabs onto my muscles, let's go. Sometimes I get pain right here. Sometimes my nipples get, like, sharp pains. Sorry if this is too TMI. Hopefully you're all women watching me. And if you're a man, don't judge. Get your mind out of the gutter. This is educational.